When summertime rolls around, ideas of road trips, camping, and guitar geek get-togethers begin to seep into the brains of guitar geeks across the world. Which is why today I'm gonna to share with you five things you need to think about so that your guitar can get through another season of outdoor activities. The first thing I want you to think about is storage. Where are you gonna store your guitar when you're camping or in the RV or just hanging out with your guitar geek buddies? And the answer is in your case. Bring your case with you, whether you're camping, whether you're just hanging out in the backyard, and here's why. You're gonna to wanna to put your guitar away at some point. And if you don't have your case with you, chances are you're gonna lean it up against something or maybe even lay it in the grass or on the ground. And that just leaves it open and susceptible for many guitar-related injuries. Maybe a dog runs through camp, maybe the kids are playing in the backyard, maybe someone decides to play a prank and bust out the garden hose. You don't want your guitar in the firing line of the garden hose. So please bring your case with you wherever you go. This way you always have a safe spot to store your guitar. The second thing I want you to think about when you're in this outdoor season is temperature. Okay, and this almost goes along with storage, but I wanna focus a little bit more strictly on what temperature can do to your guitar. Now, when you're camping, don't put your guitar in the car while it's parked in the sun. Don't put your guitar in the car while it's a warm day because your car heats up, your car acts like an oven and can severely damage your guitar. What happens when the guitar gets that hot is that the glue actually starts to soften. So the bridge could pull up, it, the, it actually could really rapidly dry out the top of your guitar and ultimately end up in a cracked top. And furthermore, the case is also extremely susceptible because especially if it's one of those plastic kind of thermoplastic cases, um, it can actually melt and twist and crack just because of the heat. So bottom line, if you're comfortable, your guitar is comfortable. Keep that in mind. That's kind of the mantra I want you to use. Don't put your guitar in the car. In fact, since we're talking about camping, the tent can be a very hot place as well. So beware of the tent. It kind of captures heat, especially if it's in the sun. I've also seen, just a quick little tip here, I've seen uh, small dog case covers actually make a thermo case cover that looks like a, almost like a space uh, uh, blanket that you can wrap on the outside of your case to kind of mitigate some of the heat that does build up. A uh, little bit more research required there, required there. I checked out the small dog case cover site, couldn't find anything, but I know I saw it at Rocky Grass some years ago. In fact, uh, um, an acquaintance of mine, Troy Brenningmeyer, who does a, a Dobro instruction site, he actually used it because he was storing his Dobro in his tent. and. From his report, it seemed to work quite well. One more quick thing about temperature. What happens when you go camping at night? Well, you have a fire. You want to roast the hot dogs. You want to make s'mores and that whole thing. And what goes better with the campfire than playing songs on a guitar around it? Which is totally fine, and I encourage you to do that. But I want you to think of this very important thing. The fire is hot. <laughs> now, I know that seems like a really dumb statement, but... Just follow me along this 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 uh, this thought line because I actually had something happen to me that um, I don't want to have happen to you. When you sit next to the fire with your guitar, your guitar is actually shielding you from some of the heat produced by the fire. So while you may not feel the full warmth of the fire, your guitar is actually absorbing a lot of that heat. So even if you're kind of feeling, oh, this is, this is a safe distance, always touch the front of your guitar to see if it's too hot. And I say this because I made the mistake of getting too close to the fire, and no, my guitar didn't start on fire. However, the binding actually started to separate just a little bit uh, on the lower bout, and it really bummed me out because it was something I could have very easily avoided. Especially at night when you're camping, you're close to the fire, it's real warm, and then you back away just a little bit, and it's generally cooler, so that's a very sudden temperature change. So just be careful around the fire. Of course, you can play around the fire. Just be aware that your guitar might be facing a little bit more heat than you realize. The third thing I want you to be aware of is if you use bug spray, or suntan lotion, or sunscreen. Don't play your guitar with your skin exposed. Bug sprays in particular, a lot of them contain DEET, and that DEET can actually eat through 
your guitar's finish. Plus, it can contain a lot of other harmful chemicals that will be detrimental to your guitar's finish. The, uh, the finish can actually bubble up uh, due to the bug spray or any of the kind of chemicals used in some of those products, and you do not want that to happen. This is easy to let happen, though, because it slips your mind. You put it on in the morning, then at night you go to play guitar, and all of a sudden the next day you open up your case and the finish is all blistered, and you're like, what the hell happened to my guitar? So just be wary if you use bug spray, go ahead and wear a sweatshirt if you play guitar try your best to wash it off if that's available to you. And last but certainly not least, one of the things that James M, an Acoustic Tuesday viewer, recommended was to get some of those uh, compression sleeves that actually protects and separates your skin from the guitar's finish. Furthermore, especially with uh, uh, on the topic of guitar's finish, some camping chairs and some camping uh, tables and things like that may, be, it may have a vinyl cover on it, and vinyl can actually do the same thing to a nitrocellulose lacquer, can actually eat through it. So just be aware of where you're placing your guitar, what you're leaning it against, and ultimately, goes back to tip number one, if you have your case along, you don't have to worry about it. The fourth thing I want you to think about is tree sap. It's not gonna necessarily terribly damage your finish, but it's gonna cause a very sticky situation that's not fun to play. It's not, it's, it basically makes your guitar not fun to play, especially if it's on the neck. So if you lean your guitar against a tree, it is liable to actually have some sap on it, and that's extremely sticky and detrimental to the playability of your guitar. So be aware of that. And the last thing I want you to think about is this your hands. They get really dirty when you're outdoors, camping, playing, cutting wood, whatever you're doing. They get extremely dirty. So bring along some hand sanitizers, some of those kind of hand wipes, or if you have the ability to wash your hands before you play, please do so because nothing will be more detrimental to your guitar strings and the sound of your guitar than having those strings basically be rubbed through dirt. Uh, and last but certainly not least, this is just kind of in general. Ultimately, when you're looking for, uh, when you're looking to bring a guitar while you're camping, Make sure it's something either that can tolerate some humidity fluctuations, like something like a carbon fiber travel instrument or something like that, or buy, or you can actually buy a guitar that you don't really care about and you can designate it as a camping guitar. And if that's the case, then you can pretty much ignore all this other stuff because, well, camping guitars, you may have seen some, they look pretty rough at the end of the season. All right, last week on Acoustic Tuesday, you learned about acoustic guitar bracing. We listened to Joy Williams' new album, and we heard from Brendan at Heartbreaker Guitars reporting from the front lines. This week on Acoustic Tuesday, you're gonna meet a songwriting ninja from Asheville, North Carolina. I'm gonna play a little banjo for you and actually tell you a banjo story, and you'll meet an Acoustic Tuesday viewer whose father inspired her to start playing the guitar. All that and more right after this. I'm Tony Polo Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 97. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week, but before we dive into that, we have a very important item of business to tend to, and that, of course, is guitar geek trivia. Here is your question for the day. What was John Fahey's middle name? Was it A, Aloysius, B, Lucius, C, E, Randy, or D, Oswald? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, before we dive into the rest of the show, I do want you to know that Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Are you tired of playing the same handful of things over and over? With Tony's Acoustic Challenge, you'll have more fun with your guitar while getting better in the process. This is done with an innovative method I call dynamic guitar learning. Log in every day to find a super fun 10 minute guitar challenge that rotates between the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Here's a recent five star review from Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, Ed P. He says, Tony approaches guitar in a methodical manner. Each lesson builds on the previous one so that these lessons make sense. This is not just about playing the guitar, but understanding it as well so you can extrapolate to become a better and more knowledgeable player. Great job. To see why Tony's Acoustic Challenge has a 4.9 star rating from over 574 reviews, go ahead and visit guitarchallenge.com or click on the link in the description below. Now, before I go any further in today's show, I do want to introduce you to a very special someone that is pressing a lot of buttons and actually making this show happen. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Tony, 
Good morning. How are you? I'm fantastic, Noah. Good morning to you. You know, we were talking about the whole camping thing, and I thought to myself, what better question to ask Noah than what it's like to camp with, you know, a whole troop of children plus a wife, and, uh, you know, what, what does that look like for the Heckman family? Um, it looks like nothing. <laughs> uh, we, we tried. Uh, I, I think it was, it was many moons ago, and we took the tent, we went up into the into the canyon uh and it was it was a horrible experience <laughs> so we tried we packed up i think we even maybe left as early as we could the next morning uh and that was when we just had three with one on the way at the time um and pretty much had sworn it off for life um a little later, we did try a KOA with a little cabin, and that was much better. That okay. Was, that, that did go better. It was, oh, good. It was nicer. But I think our next camping trip will probably be in about 13 years. <laughs> so it's down the road a ways. It's down the road a piece. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's still on, on the table, and I look forward to checking in with you in 13 years to see how that, that trip went. Um, well, I want to I play a song for you today. I've been playing songs here on, on the Acoustic Tuesday show for a bit, and the response has been great. Uh, so I wanted to play a song for you, but I thought we'd take a little bit of a detour and uh, pick a banjo song for you. So I want to introduce you to the song entitled Rusty's. Now there's a story, there's actually two stories behind the song. So uh, why don't I let you go ahead and listen to the song first and then I'll delve into the instrument and the stories associated with the tune. Thanks so much for listening to that tune. I want to share with you the instrument that I actually used on that recording and uh, when I recorded it in the studio for my first album, Hogs Back. It's this beautiful ohm jubilee banjo uh, with a minstrel style headstock, a little bit unconventional. It kind of gives a nod back to the very early African banjos and uh, the tuners are all in a line. Beautiful Waverly tuners on this banjo. And it's a 12 inch pot with a Renaissance head. Just a great sound. And the funny thing is, when I bought this banjo, I knew nothing about how to play banjo. So I started, let's just say I started with like a, a really nice pro level banjo. And um, 
I, I was not worthy. I was not worthy. V- very much like the scene in Wayne's, Wayne's World where they're not worthy. That's how I felt in the presence of this banjo. Now, the, the tune you listened to again was named uh, Rusty's, and the tuning that I use is called uh, on banjo, it's a double C tuning, G, C, G, C, D. And I used a frailing or claw hammer approach to the banjo. Now I keep thinking, man, I, I really wanna try that on guitar, but since Molly Tuttle does it so well, I just don't know if I can, I, can, I can breach that topic on the guitar. Hopefully, I mean, maybe one day Molly will come and teach us all how to play claw hammer guitar on the Acoustic Tuesday show. That'd be something. I'll put that on my list of uh, my to-do list. But I wanna share with you the story of, of this particular song. First the title, and then the whole playing aspect of the banjo, because they're two very different stories. The title story is actually quite short. I had this tune, I was playing in a bluegrass band, and uh, we were waiting in a parking lot for a show at one point, and I was playing that tune before we had played it as a band together. And uh, it led to some story about uh, somebody knowing somebody who stored acid, LSD, in a freezer, and upon moving out of the house, Someone removed this jar from the freezer and it said Rusty's Acid on the jar. And I thought, oh, that's a cool story. I'd like to remember that. So the, the song name is Rusty's. And that, that's the only inspiration. Uh, but more on the playing end of things. As I mentioned, when I got this banjo, I knew nothing about what I was doing. And uh, I just was attracted to the instrument and really wanted to learn how to play. And I figured, I don't want to waste any time. I want to go right to the top. So I did. I'm a dad's son. That's, that's what my dad does. We like good gear. Uh, anyways, uh, when my son Aiden was born, he's now 12, one of the only things that would actually calm him down when we brought him home from the hospital was banjo, of all things. So I had this really sweet connection to the banjo because I actually learned to play while Aiden was very much a newborn. Uh, so I think of that often when I practice the banjo, and, and he slept well when he was a child, but uh, there were nights that were very long, and those nights actually were filled with some glorious practice uh, because of that. So a uh, pretty cool connection, and I wanted to share that with you all because I think we can all get in touch with that emotional connection to an instrument or a song, and uh, I think it's kind of cool to do that every now and again. So again, thanks for listening. I appreciate that. Uh, if you're interested in listening to that song a little bit more, it is on uh, an album that I made back in 2000. 2010 or 11 named Hogs Back. You can find it on Spotify and the uh, Acoustic Tuesday playlist if you so care to check that out. Now, I want to keep moving on here, but I, I want to know what you think about the show so far. So in the comments below, let me know. And while you're at it, please ask yourself the very important question. Gosh, have I subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel? Because if you haven't, it's really easy. Hit the red subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. That'll get a, give you a notification of each and every new video that gets posted so you don't miss out on any of the guitar geeky goodness. And one very important thing I would ask you to do right now as you're watching this episode is go ahead and click that like button. That like button, yes, lets us know that you enjoy the show, but furthermore, it helps other guitar geeks discover the show, which is so important because the whole mission of Acoustic Tuesdays is to get guitar geeks to unite. So by hitting that like button, you are helping the mission and helping Guitar Geeks unite across the world every Tuesday. All right, next up, I had a, uh, an interesting thing happen. I tried to document a process and some things went wrong on a couple different fronts and I wanted to share that video with you. But in doing so, I was able to review a strap button. Now you might think to yourself, aren't all strap buttons created equal? Well, until I tried out the Waverly strap buttons for a guitar, I would have said yes, but these strap buttons are cut above the rest. So um, I'd like to introduce to you my um, harrowing tale of installing strap buttons on my Santa Cruz VS and my Thompson DCMA. Whitney just left for yoga, which means I have about an hour to install a strap button on my Santa Cruz VS and if I have time, my Thompson DCMA, which leads me to something I wanna show you. Gosh, those packages sure don't make these things look that cool. Hold on one second. There we go. Check out these Waverly strap buttons. These things are gorgeous. I cannot wait to see how they look on my guitar. First, I mark where I'm gonna drill with the drill bit. Next, I went ahead and drilled the hole for the strap button. Right at about a 45 degree angle, right in the crook of the neck should be perfect. I made sure to measure the depth so I didn't go too far either. And the final step is to go ahead and screw in the strap button. I put a felt washer on the bottom of it to protect the finish, and I went ahead and waxed the screw so it went in nice and easy. OK, 
Okay, one down and one more to go. Man, that strap on looks so good. So good and so functional. Yeah, the strap button. It's a Waverly Aberroid strap button. Look at that thing. It's just be it's a thing of beauty. Okay, before I put this snakewood button on my Thompson DCMA, I wanted to give you a close-up look at the strap button. It's got the screw, the strap button, obviously, and this brass insert on the top that actually nests inside the strap button that allows it to rotate a little bit, which is really nice. The felt washer is extra. That's something I added because I want to protect the finish on the guitar. <laughs> Ouch, that's what happens when you over tighten a wood strap button. It breaks. On to the tortoise shell one. Man, I love the strap button too. It's as beautiful as ever. What are you doing? Okay, well, I didn't hit my time limit, but. I got two new stellar strap buttons on my guitars, and Whitney was eventually okay with what happened here, even though I had to reorganize the kitchen a little bit. Bottom line, these Waverly strap buttons are awesome. I thought, you know, a strap button is a strap button is a strap button. Not true. These things look cool, they function great, and aside from me breaking one because I over-tightened it, that's my fault. I'll own that. I think these are top notch. I give them a 4.5 out of 5 on the random Tony rating scale. So check these out if you're considering a strap button for your guitar. You know, I'd like to think if I didn't have that one mishap, I would have been able to get it done in the allotted time and Whitney never would have known what occurred in the kitchen. But, you know, mishaps happen and she's a very uh, forgiving guitar geek spouse. So I appreciate her. Now, a little bit more details about the Waverly strap buttons. I did wanna mention the price. Um, when I said all strap buttons are not created equal, I really meant that. Now, the Waverly strap buttons are a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones that are out there. Uh, if you look on Stumac's site, I wanna say they're right around $6, not factoring in shipping. Um, if you look on Amazon, they're right around $12. And you might be thinking, well, that's silly. I'll just go to Stumac and buy them. Uh, I believe both sites are the same. I think they're coming from the same place. It's just that on Stumac, the shipping isn't factored. And once you factor in the shipping, and if you're not a subscriber to their, their um, kind of club, I think it ends up coming out to be about $12. So they're a little bit more expensive, but I think well worth it. They're actually machined strap buttons. Uh, you don't see any molding lines on the practice one, on the, on the plastic ones, and you don't see any um, carving on the wooden ones. They're really beautifully made, and uh, I think just a, a, a great addition to any guitar especially if you want to use a strap. Uh, to learn more about those, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT97. In fact, to learn more about anything that I've talked about on today's episode or that I will talk about, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT97. Now, I do have coming up, um, <laughs> I've got a great story about an artist I met, and uh, she's just a songwriting treat. And uh, the mailbag, well... I, you have to see it. It's very Canadian themed, so you're gonna have to stick around for that. And of course, your trivia answer. But first, I wanna introduce you to an Acoustic Tuesday viewer, Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, whose father inspired her to pick up the guitar. In fact, an interesting series of events inspired her to continue the guitar and actually have a major life-changing moment that I'll share with you after she tells you her story. So I'd like you to meet Sophie L, who is a guitar geek and has a fascinating acoustic life story. My dad inspired me to play the guitar when I was very, very young. He got his first guitar at 16 and it was a Guild 12 string and he saved up all $700 all by himself mowing lawns for the summer and bought his first guitar and that guitar made it all the way through my childhood and a lot of my family memories are centered around this Guild 12 string. 
so I knew at some point in my life I needed to pick up a guitar. The first and probably most dear to me is that he would sing me to sleep with that guitar almost every night. The vision for myself was that I would be able to be for my family what my dad was for me. But I just didn't have any skills at all, none. It wasn't until the Acoustic Life Festival last year here in Bozeman that it lit a fire under me. Seeing all of the different abilities, all of the different guitarists, all of the different ways that people had learned and the way that they worked together, and um, it, I, I just thought, if they can do it, I can do it. Before Tony's Acoustic Challenge, I just wasn't a player at all. I would pick up the guitar and pretend like I knew where to put my hands, but I didn't. I had zero clue. I only had the desire. I had the burning desire to want to play. After having started Tony's Acoustic Challenge, I feel so much more confident. I can get through a song now. I don't have the fatigue in my hands or my fingers anymore. I think, I think I'm starting to realize my original vision. Over Christmas this last year, I was able to play with two of my sisters. We played for, uh, we played for a group of people in a home uh, for recovery. It was an epic Christmas bash. My husband Steve has been playing the guitar for years. If our schedules align in the morning, we'll sit down and play together. We'll sit and play for a half an hour before we go to work. And it just, it's a, it's a fun bonding experience for the both of us to be able to play together. So yes, the answer is yes. I am, I am already starting to realize and I've only been playing for a year. So that original vision is definitely coming to life. I still have a long way to go and this is a journey and not a destination. My name is Sophia Lane. And I'm a guitar geek. The fact that she's playing a 12 string, I love. I just, that there's something about that that's sweet. And then when she, she goes through the pictures and you see the picture of her and her dad with the guitar, I just, that hits, that strikes a chord for me. No pun intended, but also very much intended. Uh, it really strikes a chord because it, it, it shows kind of that, again, I guess, I guess we'll go back to that emotional connection. Uh, whether it's an instrument or a song or just a, a musical moment, it's, it's pretty fantastic. And um, Noah, can you, can you shed a little bit of light on the, the story that goes beyond the story? <laughs> the story that goes beyond the story. You know, kind of how she got uh, um, the, the, the thing that made her really dive into guitar playing. Oh, oh, you're talking about, <laughs> I see, I see yes. where you're going, I see where you're going. Um, so first of all, let me just say that any opportunity to hang out with a guitar geek is, is fantastic. I, I'm there. Uh, I think guitar <laughs> geeks, if they share one thing all in common, and it's that they're just awesome people. <laughs> Uh, so as you heard in the story, she was inspired, uh, at last year's Acoustic Life Festival. Yeah. 2018. And it was just this last week that we completed Acoustic Life Festival 2019. And she's come full circle. It, Noah, I, you didn't see, cause you, Noah was actually running an open mic in another location while I was running an open mic, but her and her husband actually played an op their first open mic together. It was way cool. That 12 string was very present. And uh, it was so cool to see her go from that little spark of inspiration, like, I think I can do this, to literally getting up on stage and playing an open mic. It was so, so awesome. So I want to thank Sophie for sharing her story. And thank you, Noah, for capturing it so, so beautifully, so elegantly. It, it was my, my pleasure. I would do it again and again and again. Well, I bet, because I heard they made you breakfast. Oh, yes, they did. <laughs> made me breakfast, offered me eh, just... It was like a smorgasbord of hospitality. <laughs> well, I do have to say that if, if Sophie's story resonated with you, you'd be an absolute perfect fit for Tony's Acoustic Challenge. To learn more about how Tony's Acoustic Challenge can take your playing to the next level and you can have that inspiration, that motivation, and that success like Sophie, uh, go ahead and click on the link in the description below or visit guitarchallenge.com. And please don't hesitate to request your invite today. Now, I want to move on to today's artist, but I do have to check the mailbag first because there were some great arrivals. Uh, I have to say, uh, since Noah just mentioned, Acoustic Life Festival 2019 was just this last weekend. 
and uh, we just got some wonderful cards, some great gifts. Uh, to, uh, this this first card came from Drew. Uh, she, she says, Tony and crew, this is my way of thanking you all for ALF 2019. I know these treats will find their way to those who will enjoy them best. Enjoy a taste of New Mexico. Plus, she sent a pic from Candyman in South uh, in Santa Fe, which is pretty awesome. And she she really, she, she, she sent an ultimate care package here. Uh, we've got, let's see, oh, oops, was that a little clinking? Uh, maybe? I'll save that till last. Okay. Um, now you might think the clinking was from the Salsa Verde, but it wasn't. And we got some coffee, and we got some pistachios, which actually is a, is a studio favorite. But the clinking that you heard was a bottle of Sheep Dip, which mm. is a Scotch whiskey for Noah. And I have never had this, even though I live close to the state, some Wyoming whiskey. So I thought, man, Drew knows us really well. So I want to thank Drew, and uh, that was just an awesome, awesome gift. And also, we got the, the, we'll call it the Canadian Care Package. That's good. From, is this from the Wellstrung Pluckers in Canada? Is that correct? Or is it the Fret and A Group? Oh, now I'm confused. Me too. I, maybe I should read the card. Okay. It's the, uh, oh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. Oh, it is. It is. It's the Fret and A Group. It's a Tony's Acoustic, Jam, uh, it's Co Tony's Acoustic Challenge Jam Club in Canada. I almost said Canada. Yikes. Uh, and the card says this, a Canadian mashup from Terry W., Steve D., and Robin S. of the Fretton A. Jam Club. Our best wishes and thanks for all you do. We love TAC. And I got to tell you, this is the most well-themed care package we've ever received here at the studio. Can First I, of all... Can I add something? Sure. I would say not only well-themed, but very clear that um, they've watched... Uh, a copious <laughs> amount of Acoustic Tuesdays Correct. that we've referenced some of these things before. So, uh, first and foremost, a nice bottle of uh, Riesling, which I'm excited because now you might think, oh, those guys only drink whiskey. That's not true. We drink whiskey, wine, beer, water, coffee. We drink all the liquids. We're into the liquids. Um, and they sent a, a commemorative Canadian pin because their jam club is, is in Canada. Now, now we get into... Now we get into the brass tacks here. The, uh, uh, the Great White North uh, um, care package here. A copy of the movie, Strange Brew, featuring, of course, Bob and Doug McKenzie. Uh, the the um, quite possibly the most infamous Canadians ever. A along with the, uh, the, the CD audio, uh, which I didn't know existed, mm -hmm. but I'm very excited to dig into this, Noah. I think we might be able, we might have to do that. A lot of uh, talk about jellies, eh, and some, some beers. Uh, and this really set me over the edge because not only did we get, I think this is Bob, is this Bob? I can't, I can't tell. This might be Bob. That might be Doug. It's one of the, it's one of the characters. This is a, an action figure of the two stars, Bob and Doug McKenzie. That's Doug, this is Bob. I, when I saw this, I was 100% floored, and I couldn't even believe they found these. I, I think they stopped making these figures. But uh, I just want to say... You were acting like a kid at Christmas time. I, and I mentioned was. that you even... Did, yeah. did you have them at I one point? I did. So at one point in my life, I had these figures. But upon um, moving and people making comments that I shouldn't have toys anymore, mm. um, I won't name any names. Uh, it was not Whitney. Let's just say that. Um, Anyways, I, I got rid of them. I ended up selling them. And here they, they've come back full circle, and I couldn't be more excited because these are going to live at the studio, and I'm going to just treasure these. So thanks to the Fret and A Jam Club, and it was delivered in a reusable grocery bag. I mean, I, 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 they know us. They know us. So thanks, uh, thanks to the Fret and A Jam Club. Thank you to Drew and everybody else who visited the Acoustic Life Festival and uh, really showered us with, with gifts. I got a gritty doll from the Philadelphia Flyers, this wonderful new uh, wooden pick bowl from Chuck H. And just, uh, I mean, I got some Nutter Butters from Tony S. Yep. When I say I, I mean we. I mean, I'll share. Even though they're at your house. Even though they're... <laughs> Well, let's move on to uh, the, the artist of the week. Actually, real quick message before 
I dig into the artist because there's a fun story involved here. Um, I do want you to know that the guitar smells have not disappeared. I'm actually storing them up and I'm planning on featuring more than just two in an episode. I'm gonna make a whole segment about it. Uh, so don't forget to purchase your guitar smell shirt. There is a link right beneath this YouTube video uh, and you can go ahead and click on that, order your size, and then some other important things, go ahead and put that shirt on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars so you can be featured in an upcoming guitar smell segment and to do that, all you have to do is submit your picture at AcousticLife.tv. There's a submit link in the top menu. Click on that, upload your picture, and voila, you'll make it into an Acoustic Tuesday episode. Now, on to our artist. So this artist that I want to introduce to you is um, a fantastic songwriter. A songwriter that uh, has these beautiful turns of phrase, and, and you think she may be going in one direction, and she just kind of takes these beautiful detours, and, and it's just awesome to be along for the ride. Uh, the songwriter I want to introduce you to is Alexa Rose. Uh, home base is Asheville, North Carolina for her. Now, I met her last summer. Uh, the folks that live up the hill from us were throwing a party. They called me and said, hey, do you have any sound equipment we can use? And I said, well, of course, I got a whole garage full of it. So I brought it up and set it up and helped them sound check and whatnot and started talking to Alexa and her partner, Tim Comstock, who actually plays bass with her. And I was just so excited to meet such uh, wonderful people. And then I heard them play and I was doubly floored because the music was absolutely beautiful. So just to give you a taste of what I first heard, let's listen to her song, Travel in Heart, and uh, then I'll share more of the story. It's, it's actually pretty guitar geeky. So without further ado, here is Travel in Heart by Alexa Rose. Darling, you are in stone. You never leave wise and you never come home. When that rusted sky gets dark, you can't trust a traveling heart. You can't trust a traveling heart. thing is that they flew in specifically for this private party gig and they didn't really know anybody in Montana so when we linked up it was kind of like oh it's, you get that you, you like test the waters like oh you're a guitar geek I'm a guitar geek let's let's hang out so we actually played some tunes while they were waiting to play at the at the party and um, they actually called me up to play with them during the party it was really fun we played a Towns Van Zandt song and then one of Alexa's originals and it was just a treat to to just have met these folks and they were just so warm and inviting and pulled me up on stage and it was fun to play uh, some tunes with them and one of the tunes that's a standout tune for me uh, one that I heard off of Alexa's album. It's actually the title track of the album. It's entitled uh, Low and Lonesome. Uh, so let's give that a listen here. And listen, dear, no, you don't care about a thing. Cases. I looked in unfamiliar spaces to try to and I did want to feature one more song, but this one I have to tee up a little bit because this one you're going to say, wow, the audio is not that great, but it's a very significant performance because it was at the Merle Fest Chris Austin songwriting uh, uh, competition, contest, I guess they call it. And this song actually broke through and allowed Alexa to actually win the Chris Austin songwriting contest at Merle Fest just this last year. So uh, pretty outstanding. Congratulations to Alexa for winning such a, a, a highly uh, acclaimed award. I think among songwriters, it's kind of one of those things where once you, if, if you win that, it's like, whoa, that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. And the song's just gorgeous. And the song is entitled Medicine for a Living. And here it is. Ask you a question I know you don't want to hear Now you're probably wondering, okay, I like this music, 
so what albums should I get? Well, you might have a difficult f time finding some of these albums. So the one album that I know that is kind of available is called Low and Lonesome. You can find it on Amazon sometimes. Sometimes it comes up used. I don't know if it's out of print or if they're waiting for a new shipment or what the deal is. If you're having a hard time finding it, I want you to reach out to Alexa through her website, which of course you can access at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT97. You'll see a link to Alexa's website and uh, please let her know that you heard about her on Acoustic Tuesday and that you're very interested in her music. I'm hoping uh, very selfishly that 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 helps her get more music out there. And furthermore, if you live in the Asheville, North Carolina area, check out her website to see where she's playing. She plays pretty frequently and it's a delight to see her play. She's got a wonderful voice. Her playing is fantastic. And uh, as I mentioned, her writing, it, it just makes her a total triple threat. Again, triple threat. again that's Alexa Rose. And please uh, go to acousticlife.tv forward slash 1897 to learn more about her. Wow, Noah, we blasted through today. Can you believe it? Here we are, nearing the end. Okay, yeah. We are flipping the final pages well, of the story that is Acoustic Tuesday. Well, you know what they say. What you do know, they say? Time flies when you're having fun. I mean, it's true. It's a true statement, and that's probably why they say it. <laughs> it's probably why they. I don't know who they are, but they, they say it. Just people. But, <laughs> well, let's revisit our Guitar Geek trivia real quick, because I want to give you the answer, but first I want to remind you of the question. The question was this. What was John Fahey's middle name? Was it A, Aloysius? B, Lucius, C, Erandi, or D, Oswald. And if you answered A, Aloysius, you're 100% correct. John Aloysius Fahey was born on February 28, 1939. Both his father, Aloysius John Fahey, and his mother, Jane, played the, the piano. In 1945, the family moved to Washington, uh, uh, the Washington suburb of Tacoma Park, Maryland, and on the weekends, the family attended performances of the top country and bluegrass acts of the day. But it was hearing Bill Monroe's version of Jimmy Rogers' Blue Yodel Number no. 7 on the radio that ignited the young Fahey's passion for music. Along with his budding interest in the guitar, Fahey was attracted to record collecting. I think John and I if we ever were to have met long ago in history, we would have gotten along swimmingly. Uh, while his taste ran mainly in the bluegrass and country vein, Fahey discovered his love of early blues upon hearing Blind Willie Johnson's Praise God I'm Satisfied on a record collecting trip to Baltimore with his friend and mentor, the musicologist Richard K. Spotswood. Much later, Fahey compared the experience to a religious conversion. He remained a devout disciple of the blues for the rest of his life. Pretty fascinating stuff, and as I mentioned, I'm a huge John Fahey fan, and uh, just to, to, to know that he was a fingerstyle player, he loved record collecting, he loved all the old time stuff, I mean, I think, I think John and I would, would really be destined to, friends if he, destined to be friends if he was still here, but uh, he's not, so we can at least enjoy his music. All right, well, let's take, a, let's take a sneak peek into next week and see what's gonna happen on Acoustic Tuesday. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we're gonna take a look in a book about a lost picture. It's kind of a reading rainbow thing. Take a look, it's in a book. I don't know if you guys have ever watched that show. <laughs> um, we're gonna bite into a delicious acoustic fruit and we're gonna hear from our acoustic correspondent in Las Vegas. And that's all gonna happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. And remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv. If you wanna do a deep dive on anything I've ever talked about ever on Acoustic Tuesday, learn some guitar, discover some artists, check out some gear. Again, visit AcousticLife.tv. There are plenty of guitar geek treasures awaiting you there. So until next week, Noah and I wish you the most fantastic week we possibly can. Make sure to have fun. Make sure to listen to good music. And again, make sure to remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday.